Okay, so Integral Sports Management and Sport Indoors have brought together Nina Carberry and our client, Emma smith Chaston for a, a talk about your journey in horse racing as a, as a female jockey. It's not a subject I know too much about, but um, I'm here to learn and I've already done my research and it's a fantastic story that you have. So it's something that we can sort of learn about and, and, and really enjoy. So. I'm going to kick off uh, by saying welcome to the Integral Chat, Nina and Emma. And I want to start with you, Nina, obviously, because your background racing was in your blood. Um, your family are involved in racing as well. So was it all you ever wanted to do? Was it, was it something that you were pushed into? No, no I wouldn't say pushed into, but... Um... I grew up uh, within horses and um, I have four older brothers who were mad about horses and all had ponies and uh, my father was training at the time he'd previously been a champion jockey so he progressed and um, I suppose my brothers were were, were mad to be jockeys and uh, I went from kind of um, really enjoying it to getting a few rides in, in a few pony races at an early age and um, I kind of got the bug then but I never really thought I'd be able to make a living out of it but um but but once I got going and uh I just put my head down and just gave it 100 percent and yeah it, it worked very well it worked out very well then in the end that's actually has quite similar parallels to me but in a different field I've got five brothers and they all used to play football um at the weekends and it kind of that's why I sort of got my love of football when your family is kind of absorbed with a particular sport it, it becomes your life doesn't it is that the same for you Emma how did you become a jockey is it something you always wanted um well not really to be honest I used to love just horses in general, like anything to do with them, even down to the fact that toys are, had to be horses. They couldn't be anything else, they had to be horses. And then I happened to ride in the local point-to-point uh, -point pony race on my little hunting pony and I won. And that was it. I, I was obsessed with it. I was galloping up the fields and everything. Yeah. I had to race everybody. My sister, she had a really slow pony and mine was a little rocket. So I used to beat her absolutely everywhere which obviously I was then champion jockey at about 11 years old, galloping up and down the fields. <laughs> so that's how I got into it. And Nina, I mean, you've obviously reached some fantastic heights, um, especially your first winner at Cheltenham in 2005. That really put you on the map. How did it change your life? Um, I suppose it was a dream that to even be riding at Cheltenham, never riding, riding a winner. So um, it was a massive dream come true to walk up the long shoot and the kind of, I suppose the amphitheatre when you walk into the Cheltenham, I, I was just hooked when I, I got that feeling and uh, I suppose I wanted to do it again and I was lucky enough to do it a few times more. So, uh, yeah, once that happened, it's I, the, the doors, opportunities started to happen. I started to get rides for for owners and trainers that I would have only dreamt of to ride for. And, um, yeah, so I took every opportunity as I came and um, I got a ride in the 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 Grand National and and things like that and yeah just tried to take every opportunity as I went along and um a few won and a few a few um didn't win but um yeah no it was it was it was brilliant um it just opened loads of more doors and opportunities and I suppose it kind of kicked the I suppose the female um I they hadn't won for so long in, in Cheltenham and uh yeah I suppose it kind of kicked that off a bit as well uh, and what about so as you were, were, were coming through, was your experience different to maybe your fellow male jockeys around you, do you think? Did you have to try that little bit harder or feel that you had to? I'd say probably to get the opportunities at the beginning, I probably did, yes. Um, that's where the ladies' races came in and a big, big, big help to me and to show what I was uh, capable of doing. And that was my chance of riding for bigger trainers and bigger owners in those races. And once you kind of showed you were able to ride and uh, ride very well. And I suppose that gave me the opportunity and experience to ride against the professionals then I, when the time came. And yeah, that was a big help to have to have the ladies races and to be able to to get the experience from that and to get the experience riding for the, the better trainers and the owners. Did you feel much pushback at all? Because sometimes when you're that first, you know, first few females in a male dominated sport, you might, you know, get 
feel unwelcome or that there might be sort of people around in the industry that actually didn't want women there at that time? I didn't feel that, but I felt that you had to prove yourself. You weren't going to get the opportunities unless you did. Um, racing's quite open that way, that if you do, can get the job done and you are capable. Um, we got the opportunities and um, I think you can see back now how many girls have got the opportunities since and are still getting them. So, yeah, no, I didn't feel... It just took a while to get going, that was all. But once we got going, I think... Um, the, the doors were kind of more open than, than closed, definitely. Yeah, you're obviously a role model now for young female jockeys like Emma coming through. Was that important to you at the time or did you not think about it? It's just something that happened? I suppose it was something just that happened. Obviously, back, looking back, it was, I was um, I never really thought that way. But looking back now that the opportunities before that, I suppose i suppose it was just a new era of, of jockeys coming through um just kind of a, it did it did come true about in the 80s there was um i think it was janet morgan and, and different girls like that that came through in ireland and uh i suppose then just there was kind of quiet and then myself and katie came along and this is over jumps now and uh, kathy gannon did it on the flat and we all kind of came at the same time so it kind of it was kind of a good thing to happen that there was a good few girls that were able to ride at the same time and we got the opportunities. Mm. Emma, you might be able to tell us more about sort of what it's like to have female role models like Nina, you know, when you were growing up and, you know, getting good at your sport. I know sort of it almost became the norm to see like Katie and Nina at the places like Cheltenham and Aintree. It was, if they weren't riding, it would be unexpected sort of thing. And... <laughs> they're brilliant people to live up to because like you ask anybody about Nina everybody says you know she was equal to any man that ever rode and to have them people open the door for you and for people to realize that actually girls can do the job the same as boys um you know it, it, it's made it a lot more open uh and a lot more people are open to the idea of having girls because of the likes of Katie and Nina for us the big thing is like what advice would you give to somebody that is in my position and because like I know everyone says you know keep your head down and and graft and stuff like that and all sorts but um just one thing that if you'd known now would you have done differently um a lot of people ask me what I've turned professional but I think at the time it just wasn't ready for me to turn professional. Yes. Or but um, definitely looking back, I don't think so. I kind of, I tried not to regret anything. I, and I, I always tried to put 110% into every job I had, whether it was good enough for them, maybe wasn't. But um, yeah. I, that's what I kind of, I suppose my husband Ted has kind of suffered a bit in the whole thing that like we never really got to go on holidays that much. And uh, yes. I think racing if you can't give it 110%, you're not going to get to where you want to be. So uh, that's what yeah. I kind of set out to do. And I suppose it was just my natural way of thinking of things. Um, I think if you're not like, I always felt I can't be as strong as the lads, but if I can get myself looking as stylish and as neat as I can, I can yeah. try and ride. We can all ride the same tight tactical yeah. race, but it's, it's about looking good and looking fit I suppose in a finish and I really really tried really hard to um showcase myself that way really yeah. and uh, I think that helps that helped me a lot along the way that I tried really hard another great example is Rachel Blackmore who who started out who wouldn't have had a, a background like me who took a long time to get going and um she was about 26 before she just decided to turn or 25 and yeah. um only things started to happen for her then because she was a light rider. She had all the experience behind her. She was able to ride very strong at a very light weight. And um, she just got one trainer to support her and she took off. And um, once that um, happened for her, she just got more and more experience. And now she did have her seven pound claim at the time, which was very, um, I suppose, um, a lot of trainers wanted to use the seven pound claim and it really helped her propel her, her career and she got in with all the right people and uh, definitely you would have thought up until then she had no chance of getting going yes. and uh, she did put her head down and I've never seen anyone work as as hard as her wow. and she um I suppose a lot of people were saying are you mad turning but she, it was the right thing that she did at the time and um fair juice to her she never looked back 
I know a lot when I, because when I came back to England, I, I sort of said it out. I was like, if I'm, I'm probably going to have a go at it, I want to give it 100%. And I, in my head, the only way to have do that would be to go conditional. Because obviously the doors were open that girls didn't have to stay amateur as much. And the doors were opening for, for girls to go conditional. And a lot of people said to me, oh, just why don't you stay amateur for a little bit? And I just thought, no, if I'm going to have a go, then I've got to throw 110% at it. And I, if, I, if, I'm, if at the end I'm not good enough, then at least I can say I, I didn't doubt myself and I didn't doubt my abilities to, to go professional against, against all the lads. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Like you have the little bit, little bit of experience, and then you need the experience against professionals because that's what you want to be at the end of the day. You want to yeah. be a professional, and that's where I learned the most when I was riding was against professionals because you're not going to learn off an amateur. Yeah, like you might learn like probably the, the likes of Derek yeah. Connor or Jamie, but like you want to be in the field of professionals. Yeah. That's the only way. I felt I learned the most when I was riding against professionals and you have respect and you have to know your rules and um, no, definitely you won't learn unless you're in a, in amongst the professionals. Yeah. You're thrown in at the deep end. Um, so you... Especially when I started out, like if I, I can hardly watch the videos now because <laughs> like, they're just like my boss, fair, fair enough to my boss for keeping going with me because some of the rides are questionable, but it, you're just, you're stepping up to another game when you're against like obviously we've got Brian Hughes up the north of us who's been champion jockey. Uh, so you've got to you're going against champion jockeys and you're going against people who are riding five rides like seven days a week sort of thing. And and you're this is your first time in uh, a, a main race, not a conditional race. And you're thinking that they're all they're riding like five rides today, and this is my one. Yeah. And once you get comfortable there, it, it's like you like it, it's where you belong sort of thing, isn't it? But then first. Especially, I think probably my first ten rides. Probably, I think my boss probably had his head his head in his hands, thinking, "Why have I given this girl a license?" <laughs> that's like that's why you have to be so grateful of the. Not that um, it's just so hard when you start first time out. You just don't know what you even look like or feel like, yes. you know. And uh, it's only when you watch back that you realize how much you've improved yes. at, with riding. So that's what you can't yes. be. You can't get fit unless you get the rides, like the proper yes. fitness that you need, like, like the Ruby Walsh's or the AP McCoy's, you can't be that fit unless you get the, the rides, yeah, no yes. matter what you do, no matter how much running or how much weights or how many cycling you do, you just are riding out. Yeah, You need to be riding work every day. And um, yeah, that's, yeah. Like, that's that's the thing. You just need, um, I suppose, good supporters and good a good trainer that will that'll give you the, the help. You talked about being fit as well. Um, were there ever, ever periods where you had like long-term injuries that you had to come back for, from or sort of, sort of dark moments perhaps? Yeah, um, I dislocated my toe and cut my my, my foot or whatever. And uh, yeah, that, I was about six weeks out. That was probably my longest, thank God. I didn't have too, too long a break with that. And uh, yeah, it was difficult getting back. But I suppose that I wasn't out too long that I didn't lose it too much but when you get your cast off you always want to be back riding straight away so it's always a week period in, in about week you have when the cast comes off until you get back riding so um you feel a bit weak but I think I think you've got muscle memory that once you've been so fit it, it comes back quite quick so that's lucky enough but I did um I had a baby so that was one that I was kind of out for about nine months I suppose nine yeah. months. I was going to ask you that I mean how does yeah. a mother change things because there's also when you're a woman who is you know at the top of her career there's always that question do I do it now do I no. wait? Do I do I don't want to be out I don't want to lose it but if I don't then I might be not be able to have one later on right it's now. a real kind of um That's dilemma the only downfall of being a guy <laughs> yeah, it is the only one. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the only kind of uh, downfall that I felt in, in that career that I actually had to stop riding. And uh, obviously, I wanted to protect my baby. So I stopped riding for, I'd say it was probably it was three months into the pregnancy and stopped riding. And um, I rode four months then after in races after I had my, my first baby. So yeah, I was quite quick going back. 
I went back riding. Uh, I actually went into Gordon Elliott's one day and I thought it'd be fine. And I actually couldn't hold the horse at all. So I realized how unfit I was. I kind of, I thought I would start back two weeks time. It'd be fine, but it wasn't. It took a long, it took about four weeks to get the muscles back. And um, I think I had to get in baths as well to, to build up the muscles. Your muscles are so, my muscles, I've never, I never felt that feeling before in my life. So I understand now how people have never ridden before what they'd feel like, you know? And uh, so it took me about four weeks to kind of build up the muscle again. And I still probably wasn't strong enough until about another month into riding, race riding. I, I definitely took me a while to build up the fitness and the muscle again. Because you'd lose all the muscle after the nine months I was off. I lost everything. I was very light. I would say I was about half a stone lighter than I'd normally be riding at. So that was that was quite strange. Yeah. And, and what about when you came up to your retirement? Was that a, a really difficult decision or did you feel ready at that time? I felt ready in my head, but not my heart. And when it happened, I suppose, no, I'm, I'm happy. And then obviously... And it happened so it not happened quickly, but it when it, it when it happens, it's stop like and and uh, I suppose I was riding out Bally Doyle at the time, and that was kind of keeping me occupied. But I was still missing that kind of um, adrenaline buzz feeling, and I I wasn't missing the fact that I was gone away all the time, or because that was the reason why I stopped. And um, so it kind of took a while for me to set up my own business. And once that kind of got going, I was okay then. But it did take a very long time for me to kind of accept that I was stopped riding races because it is it is a it, it is adrenaline feeling and it's a it's a winning feeling that you, you love feeling so it's a thing that I I struggled with for probably a year or two and once I kind of got my head around not riding anymore it was um it was a lot better yeah it's it's really difficult for sports people at the top of their game when they when they finally finish because you can't really rep replicate that rush or that buzz that you feel um, when you're competing. Um, can you kind of describe to us what it is like, especially when you are in a, a big race, like, like when you won the Irish Grand National? What what does that feel like? Oh, it's so hard to explain. It's just an euphoria. It's just, it's just like, um, you just can't believe that you're after winning a big race and it, you can't believe it's happened to you. And then everyone's like, like roaring and so happy for you and uh, I suppose it doesn't sink in for a couple of days after until until you kind of realize it's after happening but it's just that kind of elation of feeling just that feeling of that 10 minutes that you've won a race that that big race that you've always wanted to win and uh, it's very hard to explain but I feel I feel so chuffed and um, humbled that I I won a race like that and and people gave me the opportunity to do it. Yeah, definitely. I've never won a work race in my life, so I've got no idea what it feels like. I'm sure it'd be amazing. Emma, is there another, any more questions that you'd like to ask Nina? I've got one more after this and then we can let you get on with your day. <laughs> yeah, um, so I guess a big one probably that uh, is, is sort of currently happening was that I was sort of, it was like my second season. I was going to my third season. I had a really, really good season before and I was sort of just beginning to get noticed as a conditional. And I went and got injured. And I was out for the whole season. Um, I, I literally hadn't ridden. Really I think I had maybe 21 rides. And I, my, my whole shoulder, I've injured my whole shoulder. I was yeah. out for the whole winter. And then I've come back in the summer. And I'm sort of getting the odd ride. And But I feel like everyone's forgotten about me because I've been gone for that long and I've not come back and ridden a winner because you know my boss doesn't really have summer horses we're more winter time really we, we have the odd summer winner but not nothing major and I just feel like I'm almost starting from the bottom again and it's just unfortunate with injuries that's it's just one of those things like even if you go on holiday someone's going to take your place and ride horses so yeah it's just one of those things you have to be in the limelight all the time you have to be in the paper all the time to um to keep your name out there and unfortunately that is just part of the game that people have to deal with mentally and um yeah. and you're right you do have to prove yourself again and get get in the door again because people have taken your rights so you have yeah. to prove yourself you kind of have to get on horses that um like are maidens and stuff again and hopefully something like that will click that's all your 
you're hoping yes. for because you haven't lost the ability to ride it's just the ability to prove your that you yeah know, yeah you basically have to you basically have to get your rides back and i suppose it's a kind of a cutthroat game that like someone's going to take your spot and it's just a, such a hard game when you look back on it you just have to be so lucky but hopefully along the line you'll get on something that will help you propel again and uh, yeah that's that's all you need is a little bit of luck and injury free please god and listen we're coming into the winter again the opportunities will happen and I'm sure there's a few ladies races coming up for you as well that you'll definitely get a spin on so they're the main yes. kind of races you concentrate and make sure you get rides in because um you, you know yourself that like they're the rides that they're the races that I'll get rides in and you just kind of you suppose you just kind of put yourself out there again and, and try yeah, and get yeah. as much opportunities as you can but um you just hope that your your trainer or your owner will will try and support you again I suppose you just have to put the head down and and, and try and keep positive is a lot yeah. down to luck Nina between getting from a good jockey and you know a race winning jockey a championship winning jockey I there is a lot of luck like Rachel got a had a brilliant time because Andrew Lynch kind of got injured and he and then she stepped into Henry Bramhead's job and it kind of propelled from there but now she's injured so there's someone taking her spot like so she's gonna have to come back and not that she has to prove herself to anyone she just has to get the rides back again so it's just it, it happens to it happens to the best it happens to the people like Emma trying to get going again so it's not a case of it only happening the people trying to get going it's, it's happening at the top as well so it's just a case of having your being able to be mentally strong and um just keeping the head down and hopefully things will will work out mm. and just finally from me with Rachel Blackmore you know winning the likes of the the Grand National I mean that's such a huge glass ceiling to smash it's like phenomenal even for right. Someone who's not in in the racing game, it was, you know, so inspirational to watch and to see. Do you think that means now that young, more young girls will want to get into the sport, and will it be easier for them to do so? Oh, well, definitely. It's definitely got into every home that only watch racing once a year, and they can't like. And no, I don't think anyone believed it actually happened. It was only probably a matter of time when it did. But it was great that it's happened now and kind of, as you said, the glass ceiling's broken and it definitely will attract more more girls into the sport. And I suppose kind of pro professionalism the and the women riders as well. Like, and I suppose when we were starting out, we kind of really didn't have any of those like kind of coaches or anything like that. So this is all all ready for them now to to, to kind of help them along. People that don't have the the background of horses like I did or the people behind me, the experienced people behind me that were that were related to me, that were able to give me the information that I needed to to get going and to kind of realise I'd ridden to terribly wrong. And um, you need those people to tell you where you're going wrong. You don't need yes people behind you. You need you need even when you won, you need people to tell you why did you do that or why did you, I suppose, not kick there or why didn't you hold them up a bit longer uh, even though you won so there you need to be questioning yourself even though you know you need to be learning all the time and um I suppose now I think I think the sport is ready and for a lot more females to get going again you need a bit of tough love don't you that's what you need unfortunately yes <laughs> and just finally Nina what, what what are you up to now and I, I guess you're still engrossed in the sport in some capacity uh, yeah, I am. Um, I I I just buying and selling and trading in the sport and um, having my own broodmare, and uh, yeah, just kind of really enjoying being part of the the sport and a different side of it. I suppose the the, the kind of equine industry bloodstock. So um, yeah, so kind of buy buy a few uh, uh folds, national folds to sell at stores and um, try and buy a few breezers this year as well. So yeah, kind of trying to build it up. It takes a long time to kind of get the money on board but um hopefully we can we can keep going there it's been so lovely talking to you i've i've learned a hell of a lot um thank you so much for your time nina it's been no problem at all i hope it was a little bit of an insight anyway it was thank you